Coming up next on Making Moves, autonomous vehicles are once again in the spotlight as JTA lays out its plan for AVs in Jacksonville. The FTA gives JTA the green light for its next First Coast Flyer line. I'm Karen Adams. Coming up, we'll take you to the brand new Jacksonville Regional Transportation Center. I'll tell you what to expect. That's coming up. Up next on JTA Making Moves, details on a new program to provide free rides to Northside grocery stores. I'm Bill Milnes. These stories and more right now on Making Moves. Welcome to Making Moves. I'm Bill Milnes. On today's show, JTA's Ultimate Urban Circulator, or U2C program, continues to be one of the hottest transportation projects in the country. We'll take you to the convention center to see why people from as far away as Europe are interested. The Federal Transit Administration formally approves funding for JTA's next First Coast Flyer line. We'll show you where it will go. And as JTA prepares to open its new regional transportation center, JTA bus operators take their first test drives at the new facility. But we begin at the Gateway Shopping Center on the north side, where JTA is partnering with the city on a new food program. After 20 years at the Gateway Shopping Center, the public supermarket recently announced it was closing, leaving customers in the neighborhood, many transit dependent, in desperate need for groceries. As Making Moose correspondent David Cotton reports, a new partnership is helping residents gain access to several different area grocers. Door to Store provides free rides to seven area grocery stores on the north side, including this new Winn-Dixie, which opened in February. It was also the spot where JTA, City of Jacksonville, and grocery store officials announced the program. If we touch just one life, uh, one family, I think we've accomplished our job, but we know we're going to touch a lot more than that. JTA CEO Nat Ford, standing alongside Jacksonville Mayor Lenny Curry and District 7 Councilman Reggie Gaffney, to launch the new program, which is already making a difference in the North Jacksonville community. Door to Store now operates in the JTA's North Side Ready Ride Zone with service to seven major grocers. The City of Jacksonville is funding the program through a grant approved by City Council members in December. Mayor Curry said it's a creative solution to eliminating food deserts. We're going to keep fighting the fight and making sure the people of Jacksonville have what they need. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the backdrop was Winn-Dixie's Food Pantry, something the supermarket chain held in the weeks ahead of the new Gateway Town Center store's February 12th grand opening. That's the way to get it done. For residents like Stephen Webb, the door-to-store option could be the difference between eating fresh foods and settling for unhealthier options. See, that's how huge and transformative this service will be for me. And what, you know, I mean, it'll, it'll be a lot easier on my, I have a bad knee and my spine is, you know, got some problems with my spine, so it'll make it much easier. Customers can call up to two hours in advance to schedule their trips to and from a grocery store. Belinda Rawl says it's another example of the JTA stepping up to the plate to serve the greater community. I think it's wonderful. I think they have a wonderful system going on. Uh, there's a lot of connect spots where you can easily connect to your destination. In North Jacksonville, David Cotton, JTA Making Moves. You might remember on a recent Making Moves episode, JTA Senior Vice President Cleveland Ferguson outlined JTA's marketing plan for several parcels of land it owns. The goal was to engage developers to see the potential of building around its various transit stations. It's called transit-oriented development. And JTA is already seeing success from its initial efforts. This 3.8-acre site on the south bank next to the Kings Avenue transit station and parking garage has drawn interest from the joint venture Corner Lot Development Group and Chase Properties LLC. The Montana Avenue location is across the street from the proposed district development and the WJXT4 studios. The plan for the Montana property comprises a mixed-use development, includes 350 residential units, along with a direct connection to the Kings Avenue Transit Station. 
The Kings Avenue station is served by the Skyway and the First Coast Flyer Blue Line, among other routes. The JTA board authorized CEO Nat Ford to negotiate a deal with the joint venture at its January 28th meeting. The Federal Transit Administration formally announced it was awarding the JTA more than $16 million for its First Coast Flyer Orange Line, the fourth and final leg of its 57-mile bus rapid transit system. The nearly 13-mile-long Orange Line will connect the Authority's new Jacksonville Regional Transportation Center at La Villa with the Orange Park Mall in Clay County. The route will primarily run on Park Street and Blanding Boulevard. JTA is also purchasing 15 new compressed natural gas buses similar to those operating on its other three flyer line corridors. In a press release, FTA Acting Administrator Jane Williams said FTA was proud to work with JTA on projects that will provide fast and efficient service while improving mobility and access. The First Coast Flyer Orange Line launches in early December. I'm Karen Adams. Coming up, we'll take you to the brand new Jacksonville Regional Transportation Center. I'll tell you what to expect. That's coming up. I'm Eugene Lindsay at the Prime Osborne Convention Center where the JTA's ultimate urban circulator project is on full display before planners and developers both locally and from around the country. I'll tell you why when JTA Making Moves continues. Disaster tips from the objects left behind. My home wasn't insured. But you can check your insurance policy now to make sure you're covered. Oh. My savings are lost, but you can put money aside and plan for unexpected disaster costs. We're lost forever, but you can scan important documents now so they survive. Whoa. For more tips on how to prepare, visit ready.gov. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Remember that to love America is to love all Americans, because love has no labels. My graduation was something I will never forget. People like you and me sometimes may have doubts in ourselves, but I feel that everything's possible. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. JTA has a great new way to get you to the beach. The First Coast Flyer Red Line. JTA's latest bus rapid transit line runs between downtown and Jacksonville Beach. You'll love the comfort of our brand new compressed natural gas buses with free Wi-Fi, in-bus video monitors with real-time news and information, and fewer stops. On weekdays, the flyer runs every 10 minutes during peak hours. JTA's First Coast Flyer Red Line. Make it your new ride to the beach. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He does the work of two jobs, but only gets paid for one. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Welcome back to Making Moves. We've been talking a lot recently about autonomous vehicles and how JTA plans to use these driverless cars to replace the Skyway and then expand it. JTA has an aggressive timeline with expectations that the AVs will be running on Bay Street in three years and elsewhere shortly thereafter. To make that happen, JTA is searching for funding partners and developers to grow the project from testing to reality. As Making Moves senior correspondent Eugene Lindsay tells us a recent autonomous vehicle forum laid out the authority's plan to businesses from Jacksonville and across the country. 
For nearly five years now, the JTA has been aggressively researching and planning for a bold new approach in mass transportation here in Jacksonville. I do believe that we are at the verge of a truly transformative period for Jacksonville and for our community. And we see this industry forum as key to our thinking about the scope and the direction of the U2C project, which is also a major step towards that transformative moment. Their focus is on autonomous, or shall we say, driverless vehicles. They recently hosted an industry forum to get input and feedback from a variety of technology and business professionals. So let's talk U2C, the ultimate urban circulator. The ultimate urban circulator is a unique, bold, visionary project that we believe will be the first public transit system to use autonomous vehicles in the United States, right here in Jacksonville. This U2C Let's Talk forum brought together autonomous vehicle manufacturers, AV tech companies, and system integrators, as well as planners, developers, and financiers. The message is the JTA is open for business. Um, I think there can be a multitude of different solutions here, whether it is a development solution, whether it is um, you know, uh, par partnerships with different AV companies um, or different scenarios. We actually just want to encourage uh, people to bring us those ideas and, and so that we can best structure the right mechanism to bring this project to fruition. The ride you're about to go on is going to be fully autonomous uh, with the exception of the interacting with red lights very easy for us to work with so actual vehicle you're riding in uh, this unit is fresh off of a deployment outside of our hometown of Charlottesville Virginia the entire U2C coverage area will be developed in four phases the first phase of the project will be the Bay Street Innovation Corridor a nearly three-mile stretch that runs east to the football stadium and entertainment district and west to the Jacksonville Regional Transportation Center, with the fourth and final phase extending into surrounding communities. This is about remaking downtown Jacksonville to be a major urban destination where you can move about on foot and some other technology other than your private vehicle. It's a wonderful project. You've got some road ahead of you. Uh, but I think you're, you're heading in the right direction by getting industry feedback. I've been in transit my whole life, and um, I, I think I understand some of what uh, JTA wants to achieve, but I think this, these sessions are helpful to clarify exactly where hopefully we can all end up. While a large part of this U2C's Let's Talk forum centered around conversations about the future of public transportation here in Jacksonville, this event was more than just talk visitors got a chance to take a closer look with tours of the JTA Skyway Operation and Maintenance Center, the U2C's test track, and with actual rides along public streets in an autonomous vehicle. The plan is for this to be a routine site when the Bay Street Corridor becomes operational in 2023. Moving into this next uh, decade, it's clear. We are moving fast ahead to become the nation's first totally integrated autonomous vehicle transit network. And so we're very excited to have you here. In Jacksonville, Eugene Lindsay, JTA, Making Moves. Business leaders from across the Sunshine State were the latest to visit Jacksonville and check out both the autonomous vehicle program and tour the soon-to-open regional transportation center. Leadership Florida, a group dedicated to introducing its members to fresh, transformative ideas and information, spent the time at JTA's AV test track to learn more about its autonomous vehicle program, the U2C. Dozens of the group's members were excited to take their first ever driverless ride. I think it has the potential to be a game changer. Transportation is um, increasingly becoming a challenge in especially large cities and urban settings. Uh, people need to, a lot of people need to, be, need to get around um, at the same time. And there are only so many cars, so, many, so much space on the road, and we need a lot of options for people to take advantage of that are convenient and affordable. Um, and can get people to where they need to get to. Oh, I think it's fabulous. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't know you were doing it. Um, I think it would be a good field trip for the people in Palm Beach County. Get cars off the road. I, I mean, we just need to lessen the traffic, 
get more people onto common vehicles, and I think this will probably help. I think it will be amazing for you. I'm assuming part of it is to try to get more cars off the street. I think it will. I think it'll be, just make everybody a lot easier. Might uh, hurt the U Uber and Lyft business, but. After their driverless experience, the group heard from JTA CEO Nat Ford, who talked about its unique mission of providing both public transit and road and bridge construction in Jacksonville. Ford also highlighted many of the innovations the authority has pursued since he arrived seven years ago. Many members then took the opportunity to tour JTA's new headquarters building. Up next. I'm Karen Adams. Coming up, we'll take you to the brand new Jacksonville Regional Transportation Center. I'll tell you what to expect. That's coming up. I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. Through a nationwide network of food banks, Feeding America serves virtually every community in the United States. See how you can help your community. Visit feedingamerica.org. Because of you, I feel not alone in this world. And you let me know that it only takes one person to make you feel wanted. My graduation was something I will never forget. People like you and me sometimes may have doubts in yourself, but I feel that everything's possible. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Riding JTA has never been easier than with the My JTA app. Now you can pay for your next bus or ferry ride right from your phone. Just download the free My JTA app from your phone's app store and you're ready to go. Use the drop down menu to select your fare and pay by using Visa, MasterCard, or Discover. You can purchase one, three, seven, or 31 day bus passes or a single ride on the St. John's River Ferry. The My JTA app transit for a modern world. One in three adults has pre-diabetes. One in three. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother, you, yes. your football buddy, your football buddy, you, the boss, the boss's boss. If one in three adults has pre-diabetes, that means it could be you, your barber, your barber's barber. Nice work. Thanks. Thanks. You, your plumber. Breathe right into your foot. Your plumber's masseuse. Yes. You, your dog walker. On your left. Your cat jogger. Or you, your co-pilot. Your co-pilot's co-pilot. While one in three adults has pre-diabetes, with early diagnosis, pre-diabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org to know where you stand. I'll never forget the day our landlord called and said, read your lease. No pets allowed. My owner tells him my dog ate the lease, but that didn't work. And now I'm stuck in a shelter, but this pit bull is ready for a new crib. I'm loving, loyal, and play well with others. So don't be intimidated by all my muscles, because the biggest one I have is my heart. <laughs> That's right, I said it. Commuting to and from work was costing me a lot of money. Now, with transit tax benefits, I can use pre-tax dollars to have a cheaper, more reliable way to work. Transit commuter tax benefits save me real money. The cost of my commute is deducted before taxes are computed on my income. This tax savings allows me to collect about three months of transportation costs over a 12-month period. Just ask your employer. It's that easy. Your transit commuter tax benefit is waiting. Going to work just became much nicer. At Rosa Parks, it was just another day. JTA bus operator Gloria Washington was finishing a set routine before heading out with her passengers. Usually I look in the mirror, the rearview mirror, and I look to make sure everybody positioned good and I move, you know, standing up. And some of them get on there it's early in the morning, lean over, doze off, take a nap or whatever. So this one particular lady, she was bent forward. And I thought she was asleep. What began as a normal day 
was about to take a sudden, frightening turn. I was getting ready to leave, and the passenger said, Driver, don't leave yet. And I asked her what was wrong, and looked up at the rearview mirror at her, and she said, This lady back here not breathing. Gloria realized something was terribly wrong. I immediately got off the bus, went and got the supervisor. Well, that morning it was an ordinary morning, everything was nice, and all of a sudden, chaos erupted. She caught up to Supervisor Tim Marcus, told him what was going on. Hey, Tim, I have a passenger on the bus that needs some assistance. The other passenger said she wasn't breathing. Marcus kicked it into high gear. We follow protocol. Everybody know what to do. My first step was to notify Jazz, so I called dispatch and told him about the situation we was having. Come on, ready? Go. Yes, ma'am. You okay? When I got on the bus, right. she was in her hands, she wasn't speaking. Are you okay? And all of a sudden, she just went out. You okay? And then she turned real blue. Then I know she was leaving the air, then I touched her, and it had no pulse. And the situation got real serious. I think we're going to need fire rescue. Now, we got an emergency situation on the bus. That's when JSO officer Terrence Hyman took the lead. I need rescue 1067. We got one white female conscious and breathing in what became a fight to save the victim's life. It was up to me to do what I had to do. One time to think about it, it was time to act. It was time to do something about it to protect that little lady from dying. So that's when I activated my AED from the trunk of my car and entered the bus, told the people to lay her down on the flat on the floor. They on the floor, they on the floor. And I opened the AED up put the probes on her. Stay calm. Follow these voice instructions. Make sure 911 is called now. She never was breathing because she had already started turning purple. And the machine only activates when a person is not breathing. So once I put the probes on her, the machine turned on and said, OK, this is what you're going to do. Begin by exposing the patient's bare chest and torso. On the bus floor, Hyman fought to save the woman's life as his partner, Officer Kenya Bush, provided critical support. I just basically assisted with getting people back away from the victim and getting people away from Officer Hyman for he can continue doing what he was doing as far as trying to, to revive this lady. Crowd control, crowd control, and I made sure that rescue were, were on their way here to the terminal. Hyman refused to give up on the victim. He activated the machine again and kept at it. And then it's when the machine shocked her. At that time, she didn't respond. So then the machine told me again. The JSO officer activated a series of compressions and breaths again. But would it help? and she popped out of it, start breathing again. She made it. She was alive, breathing, and taken to a hospital. What made it all work, everybody know what to do. We were trained and we did it before. So will it happen again? Yes. And it's very likely, particularly when you consider thousands of people come through here every single day. But if it does happen again, JTA will be ready, just like they were this time. Everything was a team effort. Collectively, everybody did the right thing. Together, they made it work. They did their jobs. But more than that, they saved a life that day. In downtown, Terry Casey, JTA Making Moves. Welcome back. For most of JTA's bus operators, the Rosa Parks Transit Station has been the only bus terminal they've ever known. The same is likely true for most of JTA's passengers. So the move from Rosa to the JRTC on March 30th will be quite the shock for everyone. To ensure a perfect experience, the drivers have been learning the ropes of the new facility, so all they have to do is drive. Here's Making Moves' Karen Adams. If you use public transportation, 
particularly JTA buses in the Skyway, then you're about to see some drastic changes. The Jacksonville Transportation Authority is about to open up a brand new state-of-the-art facility in La Villa. This new multimodal transit terminal will be called the JRTC, an acronym for Jacksonville Regional Transportation Center. The new facility will bring together JTA buses, the First Coast Flyer, the Skyway, regional shuttles, rideshare, paratransit, and other shared transportation. Recently, bus drivers got a sneak peek at the new terminal and took some practice runs through the new passenger pickup area. Today was an opportunity for all the bus operators to get a look and feel of the new JRTC bus terminal. Operators are given the opportunity to make two loops around the bus bays, pull into the bus bays, to line up for ADA passenger pickup or regular passenger pickups. And the bus drivers had nothing but positive things to say. They absolutely think this is a great improvement over Rosa Parks. Dennis Collins is one of those drivers. He's been a bus driver for the last 33 years and is a multi-year winner of the Jacksonville Bus Rodeo Driving Competition. Collins thinks that this new setup is awesome. Pulling into the station for the first time, there's more room here than I thought there would be. I think after construction and all of the obstacles on the sidewalks are gone, that it would be really more open and it would look and appear a lot different and actually be more room when we start loading people and unloading people. What's great about this new facility, the entrance is safer, it's more efficient, the exit also is safer and more efficient for the operators. The new transportation center will not only make everything centrally located, but will also provide additional safety to area riders. All the bays are on either side of the platform. There'll be no customer interaction walking in between buses like we currently do now at Rosa Park. This is a, a, a very good improvement in, in terms of safety for our customers and our bus operators. There is a lot of room. I think um, it, it's more space for us to drive and the reason why I say it's going to be a little safer, you don't have the passengers crossing over in front of the buses as you did when we were at Rosa Parks. The new JRTC terminal will have the latest security technology, a 24-hour security center, an indoor passenger waiting area, ticketing center, and more. So mark your calendars because it will open to the public on March 30th. In La Villa, Karen Adams, JTA Making Moves. Before we go, this programming note. On our next show, we begin the countdown to the grand opening of the Jacksonville Regional Transportation Center at La Villa as we take you inside the facility for the first time. We also want to invite you to the beach's Earth Day festivities at Jarbo Park in Neptune Beach, Saturday, April 18th, where you can check out our latest autonomous vehicle for yourself and learn what all the hype is about. Our Making Moves cameras will be there, so feel free to tell us what you think. That wraps up this edition of Making Moves. We welcome you to check out our YouTube channel where you can watch past episodes and stories at your leisure. The direct link to that page is available on JTAFLA.com. You can also find stories and other exclusive content when you like our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash JTA Making Moves. For the entire Making Moves team, I'm Bill Milnes. Thanks for watching today and we'll see you next time.